Hello everyone, I'm Colin Knett. Not too long ago I received an email about somebody making toys and they asked me what the best way is to cut small parts. Uh, and I told them you really need some kind of a holding device. And it reminded me that I haven't done anything like this, so today we're going to make a holding device for small parts. Now the version I'm making is going to be 17 inches wide and two and a half inches wide because I want to be able to use a variety of materials and there's going to be one end piece, in this case five inches wide. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the drill press because we need to drill a hole so that we can make a slot in here. I'm at the drill press. I'm going to be drilling three holes. I have the first bit in because I need to drill something wide enough for this hanger bolt to go in. But I'm also going to drill a couple of uh, recessed holes uh, that will accommodate the head on that screw. Okay, I'm ready to go. I'm going to use my magnetized fence for the drill press here. If you didn't see that, uh, I'll put a link for that so you'll be able to see that. I need to draw a couple of parallel lines here and rather than trying to figure it out with a ruler I'm just going to use my marking gauge and I've already set it up for one side and I'll just draw a line down it. Okay. okay, now that I've got that in there, I can mark the top and the bottom where the hanger bolt wants to sit in there. And there's a little bit of room in there, so now I just need to drill a hole so that I can put that anchor bolt right in the center there. Okay, now I'm going to take a minute and just put that hanger bolt in there. Now before I go any further, I want to make an angle cut on the ends of this holder in case I have to make some angle cuts when I'm making small parts. There, that's better. Well, at the last minute, I've decided to change things up a little bit. And here's why. I wanted to use a hanger bolt here, but this is the longest hanger bolt that I can that's available to me, and it's really too short because it doesn't give me very much room in there. So what I'm going to do, I'm sort of abandoning the hanger bolt idea. What I'm going to do instead, I'm going to insert a T-nut on this side, and I'll put a bolt through that side. But look at I'm going to use some ready rod and I'm just going to drill, so I'll countersink this a little bit so that T-nut fits in there. So the T-nut will go in there, a nut will go on the other side, and that will be fastened tightly. Then I can put a wing nut on this side, and that will allow me a much greater um, range that I can put smaller pieces in there, so that'll be much better. On my way to the drill press, I came up with another idea, and I thought I'd check it on the table saw. What I'd really like to do, so that this nut is not in the way, is I can actually bury that in this wood here. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to drill a countersink hole in here between the uh, the miter gauge and the arm here. Okay, so the way this is going to work, I'm going to drill a little tiny pilot hole and that will give me the placement for both those countersink holes. The next thing I need to do is drill the through hole and that needs to be big enough to fit the ready rod through. And I want to make sure that these don't move around, so I have them clamped in parallel, but I also put some spacers in here so that I drill this hole exactly parallel. Perfect. All right, let's put the ready rod through there. Now, I'm coming 
from the inside here. I'm going to use one of these little star washers in here to uh, make sure that I lock that nut on there. Is that it? Yeah. There we go. There we go. That slides much better now. All right, let's take that over to the table saw and try it out. So the way this works, this is just going to be my little test piece, is you want to locate the end first of all. And I'm just going to crank that down nice and tight there so that doesn't move. Now I can, wherever this is here, I can set this side because now I know it'll be parallel all the way across. So I'm just going to put it in a place just like that. And now I get to move that wing nut all the way down there. And again, I'm going to tighten that up nice and tight here. And that's all ready to go. Well, I'm really happy the way this jig turned out. Uh, and that concludes my video on making a small parts holding jig for the table saw. You could use it on the chop saw, band saw, even for sanding. Uh, lots of places that you could use this that'll keep your fingers away from blades and bits. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.